Lawrence Joseph Bader, also known as Larry, was born December 2, 1926, in Ohio to Stephen and Charlotte Bader. Lawrence's father worked as a doctor, and his family was well off. He attended the finest schools and showed an interest in archery. In 1944, when he was 18 years old, he entered into the US Navy and helped fight in World War II. He survived the war and returned home to Ohio. Lawrence would finally graduate in 1946. Lawrence soon found work at a Reynolds Metals Corporation where he sold cookware. Not long after, he met Mary Lou Knapp and in 1952 they got married. By 1957, they had three children and was expecting another baby soon. On 15 March 1957, Lawrence decided to go fishing on Lake Erie. There were severe weather warnings, but he went out anyways. He rented a 14-foot boat, kissed his wife goodbye, and headed out to the lake. Lawrence was expected to be gone for some time, but eventually his wife got worried. The US Coast Guard was sent out to look for Lawrence, but they had to wait for the storm to pass. When they could finally go search for him, they found an empty fishing boat that was washed up on the shore of Perkins Beach in Lakewood. They were able to confirm this was the boat Lawrence was on. There was no sign of Lawrence, however. One of the two life jackets was also missing. It was determined that the boat's motor went out and it got tossed around in the waves, which must have caused Lawrence to fall overboard. Rescuers started the search off Lake Erie, but the weather was still not favorable and the area they had to search was very big. When days turned into weeks, the rescuers unfortunately had to give up looking. Lawrence's wife, Mary Lou, received $40,000 in life insurance. This helped pay the $20,000 Lawrence owed the IRS since he hadn't filed any tax returns for over a year. In 1960, the Summit County Probate Court declared that Lawrence Bader wasn't alive anymore. A couple years later, a friend of the Bader family went to a sports show in Chicago, Illinois. There were archers at the show. One of them looked very familiar to the friend of the Bader family. He realized that it looks like the long deceased Lawrence Bader. The only difference was that a man had a mustache and a black patch over one eye. When confronted, this man claimed he is not Lawrence Bader, but actually John Fritz Johnson. John was a well-known radio and television personality who lived in Omaha, Nebraska. John informed a friend that he had never even been to Ohio. He further claimed he was raised in an orphanage and served 14 years in the Navy before moving to Omaha. He had a wife called Nancy and two children. The friend still believed this man was Lawrence and called Lawrence's family and told them of his suspicions. The friend also got John to speak with Lawrence's family over the phone. When the Bader family heard John's voice, they knew it was actually Lawrence and booked a flight to Chicago. John agreed to take a fingerprint test. He wanted to prove that he is not a liar. To his own astonishment, John's fingerprints matched Lawrence's fingerprints exactly. It was discovered that John Fritz Johnson seemed to materialize out of nowhere four days after Lawrence disappeared. John became a celebrity in Omaha. He joined KETV in 1963, where he announced the news, sports, weather and commercials. In 1962, John married his wife Nancy. They adopted a daughter and soon had a son of their own. He led a very successful life as John. When he found out he was really Lawrence Bader, his life fell apart. Nancy left him and he lost his job. He also now had to pay for children he couldn't even remember. His first wife, Mary Lou, now had to repay the life insurance she received. Since she was Catholic, she had to reject the marriage proposal she received from a man because her husband Lawrence was still alive. John continued to say that he had no memory of his life as Lawrence Bader. He claimed that he had a strange case of amnesia, 
where he could remember nothing of his life as Lawrence, and had false memories of being John. In 1965, Mary Lou Bader and all the children had a two-day family reunion with John. It was a wonderful time, but John insisted that he didn't remember them. After that reunion, John thought about moving to Ohio, but never did. He was later interviewed and said, All of a sudden I find out that 30 years of my life never happened. You see, I really do have 30 years of memory as John Fritz Johnson. What am I supposed to do with those 30 years? Throw them out of the door? A year after that reunion, Lawrence Bader or John Fritz Johnson passed away at a St. Joseph's Medical Hospital in Omaha. It will never be known if he really had amnesia or if he abandoned his family to get rid of the $20,000 he owed the IRS and to start a new life. Let me know what you think. Mark Sanford was born on the 28th of May 1960 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Before his senior year, he and his family moved to South Carolina. In 1989, Mark married Jenny Sullivan. The two of them had four sons together. Mark founded Norton and Sanford Real Estate Investment, a leasing and brokerage company, in 1992. In 2000, he announced that he will be running for governor. He ran as a Republican and beat a Democratic incumbent. His first term as governor was pretty uneventful. The same cannot be said for his second term, however. Mark disappeared in June 2009. His whereabouts was a mystery to the public, his family, and the state law enforcement division that served as his security. Soon, his disappearance received nationwide coverage. His staff hadn't communicated with him for four days, and he did not inform his family where he was going. Some of his staff members then revealed that he told them he would be hiking the Appalachian Trail, but it could not be confirmed. His chief of staff made 15 calls to Mark, but received no answer. Mark also didn't call his family on Father's Day. Members of the media did some investigation of their own and found that he is in Argentina, and they also found out when he would return. They were waiting for him in the airport after they landed. Mark was then pretty much forced to hold a news conference. He then admitted to adultery. Mark said that he went to Argentina to be with his soulmate. Despite this pretty big scandal, he finished his second term as governor. His wife divorced him even though she was already aware of the affair, and for a brief time he was engaged with a woman in Argentina. Simon Lemby was 14 years old in 1999. He and his mom had recently moved from Angola to St. Gilles, Belgium. He spoke no English, French or Dutch, only Lingala, and he also knew no one except for his mom. Ten days after their arrival in Belgium, on November 12, 1999, young Simon asked his mom whether he could go watch television in their neighborhood community center. The community center was not far from their home at all, but Simon never arrived there. It was at first thought that Simon was abducted. His mom told police how he knew no English and how he was a very shy boy. It took 19 years for the police to find Simon Lemby. All this time, Simon had lived under a false name in Europe. He explained that he indeed ran away and he made it clear that he was not abducted. Simon said he wanted to get away from family problems. He now lives a happy life with his wife and kids and wants no contact with his parents.